Hi guys. So we are back for the for the second video of this sort of video series that I wanted to make talking about letting go. In case you haven't seen the first video, it is on my channel, of course, and I talk about how letting go can sometimes be a very surprising and positive thing and I talk about changing jobs. And if you were here, if you were here for that video, the previous video, I'm sorry, my cat is looking at me. She's staring at me. Yala, arrête. Hop, si tu veux, tu viens ici. Mais après, c'est fini. Regarde, comme tu es jolie. Comme tu es jolie. Okay, so basically, in the previous video, I talked about how this video would not be as positive and how I would focus on some areas of my life which have been, I believe, negatively impacted because I can't let go. I think that, um, like many people, what I really find difficult to let go of is relationships and not expectations of relationship, but rather letting go of past relationships and past connections that you had with people. And here letting go kind of also covers the fact that relationship, relationship, what? Relationships change, feelings change, uh, people change and the connections that you have with them change as well. And uh, that's something that I find really difficult to accept. And um, there is a natural, I believe, and healthy and just normal overall process in that but I believe there are also circumstances where it is definitely more of a um, not very fulfilling relationship situation sometimes it can even be toxic relationships which I believe I have never really had in my life truly and that's something I'm really grateful for because I know that's something very damaging very damaging and that uh, people have really a lot of uh, troubles recovering from and I'm very lucky that I never really had that kind of relationship in my life um, Okay, how do I really really talk about that? Okay, I have talked about the fact that I am a very lonely person frequently on my channel on Instagram and when I'm talking about being lonely, I do really mean lonely. I'm someone who likes spending time alone. I'm someone that needs spending time alone, but also likes spending time alone. I'm someone who travels solo. I'm someone who likes to spend evenings on my own. I like to watch movies on my own. I like going to the theaters on my own when I'm not anxious, of course. So I do like activities that you do on your own and I do not feel the need to always be with somebody, right? But even for me, even for someone like me, like me who likes to be alone, I do feel lonely sometimes. I don't see a lot of people on a daily basis, but even on a weekly basis, I really don't see many people. I think this has to do with not being able to let go. Because when I came to Paris to study at uni, I consciously and also unconsciously did not meet new people and did not form new bonds and new relationships and this is where the idea that letting go is useful and necessary sometimes to create new space in your life and new occasions whether it would be for job for hobbies for people you know that's definitely where the idea is relevant to my life and my situation. I've had friends that I've known for basically forever. I only or kind of only have childhood friends, you know. And I'm sure that if you're in my case, you will probably understand. There are the people that I spend the most time with, that I would do everything with. Um, and moving from my hometown to Paris, therefore being away from many of them, was a very 
very big change and it was very disheartening at times and very difficult to see that as much as you want to protect the relationship and maintain it in the way that it used to be and the way you've always known it to be distance and age and new people and new situations new environments really make it difficult and I would even say perhaps impossible unless of course all parties are as enthusiastic and uh, invested in maintaining the relationship because people don't realize that relationships are work yes they are natural yes they are um, spontaneous and yes they're based on feelings but they're also based on making the conscious efforts frequently to be there for the person to reach out to spend time to hang out basically to nourish the relationships and I was with friends with people who apparently did not really want to nourish the relationships and that's something I still feel today and I feel it with a lot of my friends at different degrees and um, when I went to uni I refused change I refused to let go of the idea and of the not even the, the idea I refused to let go of the fact that my friends were this group of friends and only this group of friends and therefore I did not really put myself out there on top of that I am anxious on top of that I'm an introvert so all of that combined you can really imagine that I never really create relationship with people I would create relationships with people but they would last maybe a month or two a bit more perhaps and that was it I really never created a new friendship offline and that sounds maybe insane, but that's something I really want to say because I feel like there's a lot of stigma around that. I never created a new friendship offline after, you know, moving to Paris and leaving high school. Never. Really never. There were parts of me and factors that made it impossible or really difficult for me. Anxiety, depression, being an introvert. Um, not smoking, not drinking, not liking to parties and things like that, not liking to party and things like that. Obviously that makes it a bit more difficult when you're in your 20s, right? But there was also a part of me that was very conscious of the fact that I did not want to meet new people. I wanted to focus solely on my friends, I wanted to focus solely on this group of friends that I had known forever. And that was really, really painful to see that I was the only one in the group doing that. It was really painful to see that I was investing so much of my time, so much, so much of my energy, so much of my mental space to those friendships, trying to make them work, basically, even though we were far away, even though we had different schedules, even though we had different lives, even though we had different interests even. I really tried my best. I can safely say that even though I'm not perfect or I'm trying to paint myself as the good guy here, I really tried my best. And I was the only one doing that. I really feel like I was the only one doing that. And objectively, I can say I was really the only one doing that. Um, and so that left me very bitter very very bitter and I realized that I hadn't let go of something that was really precious to me but that it did not even really exist in the end and I was left with this sort of ghost of a friends group that was so present in my life because it because I had all of my memories with them, because I would think of them every time I wanted to go somewhere, every time I wanted to travel, every time I wanted to go to a concert, every time I wanted to have a new project or whatever, I would always think of them first, because that's what we always used to do. And that's what I wanted to do as well. It was not purely out of habit. It was truly because my heart felt like that. But there was no response. Never. So there was the presence of 
oh, naturally and positively, I want to turn to these people. I want to turn to these relationships. I want to leave that kind of things we used to live before. And there was also the presence in terms of, oh, it is bringing me down so much. It is bringing me so many negative energies and so many negative and painful, really painful feelings. I've never really said that out loud, but when I was 20, 21, and I started therapy. No, I mean, I started therapy when I was 20. Yeah. Um, I went to therapy because I was so anxious and so depressed that I could not leave my house. I could not attend university. I could not have a, ba a proper life, basically. Um, but I remember that the first thing I really started talking about that didn't really seem to have any sort of logical link to the subject, anxiety, agoraphobia, whatnot, was friendship and every single time I would talk about friendship I would cry every single time and I realized oh my god that's something I need to let go of I need to let go of the desire to want the past in the present I need to let go of the painful emotions I need to let go of the resentment I need to let go of the hopes and expectations now and I am very disappointed at myself in a way to say that years later I I won't say I'm in the same place but I am still working on that that's something I haven't managed to completely completely let go of and that's something I struggle with still today being 29 and you have to realize that I left my hometown and this group of friends when I was 18. So I basically spent over, kind of, okay, let's say, I spent 10 years kind of grieving relationships, memories, shared experiences, and that's still a process that I'm in. I have accepted certain things, I have dealt with a few things as well. I have accepted the change of relationships with some people. Unfortunately, I also have stopped, you know, communication with some people. Not because I wanted to, not because of anger, but because I realized that letting go led to that. Basically, when you stop investing yourself so much, when you stop being the one who always puts in the effort and that the relationship disappears, you have to accept it. At least that's how I see it. I have to accept it. I can't be the only one working for the relationship. And that's sad. And that doesn't mean that the relationship is over in my heart or in my mind. I still care for those people. I still think of them. I still like them, love them, wish them for the best. I would still be there for them if they needed me, but I let go. And unfortunately, that's the saddest part, I think, when you let go. Okay, I let go of the anger. I let go of the overinvestment. I let go of all the pressure that I put on myself. I let go of basically all that I'm putting myself through and putting on myself to make this work and you realize that there is nothing left when you let go because you were the only one holding you know what you know it's like holding someone's hands and you're you're convinced that you're holding them very tight and you let go and suddenly there is no one that holds you back because you were the only one holding all this time and that's that's so painful like honestly I think this is one of the most painful thing and no one really talks about it too much, I believe, but I have been way more and way deeply affected by relationships, like friendships that stop, friendships that change, friendships that die of a slow death sometimes, than I have been affected by romantic relationships. Um, because friendship to me is so important and I think that's also why it's been so difficult for me to let go and why it's brought me so many painful feelings. I think I value friendship a lot more than most people. I think that's, that's my personality. I value friendships over a lot of things and I 
don't recognize myself in the way society has sort of organized and placed relationships with a hierarchy. But yeah, that's brought me a lot of pain. I have to admit, that's brought me a lot of pain and um, I realize I have come a long way because I can talk about that without crying and because I have accepted that relationships sometimes are still beautiful even after a change, you know. But I still find myself occasionally in situations where I am expecting things and I'm putting myself out there and I realize there is no re there's no response basically. And you realize that people are doing their lives without you, without really incorporating you in their lives. When you, on the other hand, are really thinking of people and trying to make it always work in a way that you don't have to disconnect or you don't have to stop being around them, if that makes any sense. Like, And one thing that's really important, and I want to make it clear, I am not someone that waits on people. I'm not someone that needs people all the time. I mean, if you know me even a little, you would know. Basically, none of my friends, apart from one person, still lives in Paris. I still live in Paris. I travel solo. I've been solo to Vietnam, I've been solo to Georgia, to Azerbaijan, to Turkey, because none of my friends wanted to go and I wanted to go, so I went and I had a great time. A really, really great time. None of my friends like to read. Well, I read. I have a YouTube channel, an Instagram account, I have an amazing community over there. Um, I have projects that, you know, I care very much for and that I cherish and value and um, that has nothing to do with my friends. Um, I have so many interests and so many hobbies that have nothing to do with my friends and I have so many other relationships but they are not that type of friendship, that type of relationship. So it's not like I am just hoping for my friends to be in every single thing that I do and putting a pressure on them or whatever. It's just that I find it no I find it very healthy and very normal to want to share positive things with people you like and to expect them to support you and to kind of value you and at least save a little space for you in their lives. And I think that growing up you realize that's not really happening all the time or frequently or with everybody. And um that's the thing I can't let go of. I can't let go of this idea. Of friendship I can't let go of those expectations and those feelings for those people and um, and that hurts sometimes that really hurts and um, I know I'm not the only one in that situation um, and um, part of me thinks that letting go would mean being so cold and <laughs> being so detached and that's something I don't really want to be but part of me really thinks as well that not letting go of those feelings, those expectations, the resentment because there is still resentment on my side um, is preventing me from moving even more forward. I feel like it's holding me back and I feel like I could potentially do even greater things or be even more fulfilled or experience even more amazing things if I just let go of all those things that I mentioned previously. I feel like this would perhaps create space in my life for new friendships that would be I don't want to say more meaningful because I don't want to compare things in that way but perhaps with people who are more in tune with who I am now, who are more, who are more yeah, in tune, that's really what I think, in tune, in tune with who I am, that I would be more in tune with who they are as well, that we would perhaps see eye to eye and that we perhaps have a somehow similar 
vision of the future and of life and I realized that not letting go is preventing me from having that experience. I'm going to end the video on not a very happy note, not sharing tips or a positive experience and telling you how I let go and how I managed to let go and create new opportunities and new relationships because that's not that's not where I'm at and I want to be real, I want to be genuine, I want to be honest with you guys. Um, I want to be vulnerable, even though I don't feel like it's being vulnerable to me, opening up never really is a big deal. But yeah, the truth is, after high school, I never really created relationships offline, never managed to create new friendships. I was stuck and I'm still stuck partly on my old relationships and all the resentment, the anger, the pain that it sometimes carries. And um, that's something I'm still working on and I know that going back to therapy, which I'm planning to do hopefully in August, I know that's something I'm going to talk about a lot. I know that's something I'm going to focus on and that's, maybe that's not fine, I don't know, but that's my situation and I think that's something we don't really talk about too much because as I said, there is this stigma around not being social, not, not having friends, that's a shameful thing. Um, and I wanted to yeah, I just wanted to chat with you honestly about that um, in this second part of this letting go process, letting go um, reflection that I'm having with you on here. So I hope this video was somehow relatable or interesting or perhaps comforting and I will see you really soon with a last part on letting go. Yeah, <laughs> what a... What a plan. Okay, um, I will see you. Bye, guys.